just the last two years, there's been a flurry of activity, a flurry of developments, discoveries in this field, recognizing that a subset of patients with uh, non-small cell lung cancer have recurrent genetic abnormalities affecting the MET gene. The first one that was recognized is MET amplification, which is not very common and also not easy to define because it comes in a spectrum. It's, it's uh, you know, something where we need to use certain thresholds to understand what level of amplification is a key driver event. But lately there's been some understanding that high-level gene amplification of MET indeed identifies cancers where MET inhibitors you know, can work such as small molecule inhibitors, crizantinib, cabozantinib, etc. But more importantly, we've also recognized that maybe about 3 to 4 percent of non-small cell lung cancer patients with a much larger fraction in a particular very aggressive subtype of lung cancer called sarcomatoid lung cancer have a recurrent MET abnormality called MET exon 14 skipping. Now that's a very unique genetic abnormality that can be caused by a range of genetic aberrations leading to the same thing, just a complete skipping over of one of the building blocks of the MET you know, gene, exon 14. This leads to the loss of, of a very particular amino acid in the MET protein. That amino acid is critical for the binding of another protein called C-Sibyl to MET. So in the lack of that amino acid, this other protein cannot bind the MET protein. The second protein basically marks the MET protein for degradation. So it just sends it to like a trash bin in the cancer cells. So when that protein cannot bind, MET doesn't go to the trash. It's expressed at a very high level and it can drive cancer growth very successfully. So MET exon 14 skipping leads to this very unique situation that we have MET overexpression as a result of this change. And these cases where we, where we can identify the presence of MET exon 14 skipping have a very high chance of responding to MET inhibitors, although the experience is limited, limited to maybe 20, 30 patients overall. But it's just so dramatic, 67, 80% of patients exposed have had dramatic responses both to crizantinib, cabozantinib, as well as some other MET inhibitors to the point that given the very limited experience in the absence of phase 3, phase 2, or even phase 1 studies, guidelines had incorporated both MET exon 14 testing as well as treatment as a result of uh, uh, testing for in the management of patients with advanced uh, non-small cell lung cancer with MET abnormalities.